we have to ride us around in a police car, five of us came at the foot of the Br Brighton Hill. This house had been drinking, we could smell it. So he pulled his gun and he cocked it. He said, you see that hill? If you, you little black ass, if you can make it up to the top of that hill before I shoot your little black ass, you're free now. Get to running. And I'm just screaming, nine to 10 years, I'm screaming back, no, please don't shoot me. And my little friend says, don't shoot Alvin, don't shoot Alvin, don't shoot Alvin. And I guess the question is today, how far have we come? Not far, not far enough. My father got my mother pregnant as teenagers in Miami, Florida. And so my mother was sent from Miami, Florida to live with her elder sister in North Rock, Arkansas, who lived right across the road from the Brooks, the Stellan Cluster Brooks. She then left me with the Brookses. My dad he killed a white man over moonshine, moonshine still. He got away, didn't escape, but just something in between happened that he was told he had to get out of Arkansas and they brought me. And so that's how I got to Kansas City, living in an old black community, going to all black schools and, and having a relationship with, with white folks was only when you went to the big stores in downtown Kansas City. The only we couldn't eat but in one place. And I always kind of wondered in, 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 in nine or 10 years old, mama, why can't we eat up there? And she never said why. And I was on the police department as a cadet. I was, I was, I was the gang person. I was only one to work with the gang and had a good relationship with them. What inspired you to be an officer back then? Maybe if I get in the police department, I don't have to be like the rest of them. And maybe I could just make a difference. One incident where police officer misused me and my cousins and, and a, friend, a couple of friends of mine. A police car drove up with two white police officers and he grabbed him with his right hand, twisted him over the police car hood and, was, and Ram was crying. I joined the police department four years later and lo and behold on my shift, here comes this officer. As you remember stopping five or six black kids who had three horses and over there, no. And I said, you don't remember that? No, it wasn't me. I said, yes, it was you. I said, but listen, don't worry. I paid him on the arm. I said, I got you back. When that officer said that to you, how'd that make you feel? Man, I, 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 blood rushed to my brains, you know. <laughs> this is when I was sworn in as the first director in city government. The front page of USA Today, there was a group called Black Men Together with George H.W. Bush at the White House. So who has the power in America? It's not us of color, it's just white America. I wonder how many, how many men, black, black men died. And, and I guess people can say, well, that's history, it doesn't happen anymore. Oh, but yes, it does. Trayvon Martin. Oh, God, yes. Tamir Rice. And, and, and Floyd. And so we can pass laws and have slogans and have marches and all those things are important because they do make a difference. But the question becomes, how do they impact America's structural racist system? I pray for us every night as a people and as a nation, that these 28 days of 2020, Black History Month, African American History Month, we mean more than just a month, a pathway to freedom, justice, equality, understanding, human understanding, reconciliation, everything that makes good for us as the people of God.